continuation of the last Sunday's message. So uh, we will read some uh, spotted uh, four, uh, three or four uh, different uh, message uh, verses from the Bible. So let's shall we all stand and uh, open our Bible. The first Deuteronomy. It's not a, a Bible class time, but uh, we have to read this first. So Deuteronomy chapter four, verse two. Okay, we will read this all together in one voice, and then we will continue to read other voices too. Ready, go. You shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandment of the Lord your God which I command you. Okay, remember this one, this command, and then let's turn into Second Peter, chapter one, verse twenty-one. Second Peter chapter one verse twenty one. Ready, go. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of faith as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And uh, the last one. Revelation chapter 22, verse 18 to 19. Revelation chapter 22, verse 18 and 19. Ready, go. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the place that were written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his heart out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. Okay, so these three verses are regarding the, the word of God. So we will read some more regarding the church. Matthew chapter 16 and 18. Matthew chapter 16 and 18. Ready, go. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against thee. And Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Ready, go. Take ye therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to be the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. The last one is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15 to 17. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15 to 17. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 15 to 16, 17. Ready, go. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, to the voice of the archangel, and with the sound of the altar, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for telling us about what is the fundamental church and what is the fundamental members. Lord, also this, this week that you have given us regarding how the fundamental church started and how the, the message you have given to us and how we can continue to be faithful as a fundamental member. 
Lord, as you have given me the, uh, the word this morning, please help me to preach the word that it will penetrate into the heart of the all the congregation today so they will remain as a fundamental church members and so they can be faithful to the Lord and so they can continue the ministry that God has given to this local church and also to the individual. Give me the wisdom, Lord, so I can preach your word effectively. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. The first three the, the verses that we read is regarding the Word of God and what God is expecting to His people, the follower of Jesus Christ, the people who believe in God, and how we should uh, treat and respect the Word of God. And God is uh, giving us uh, from the Deuteronomy and Second Peter and also Revelation how we should handle or respect the Word of God with a full uh, fear and the respect. And if we do not do it properly, then there will be some uh, punishment because of our mistake. And the next uh, three verses that we read is about the church. In Bible, the church is equal to the born again Christian, the group of the people that is called the church. So what is that uh, the fundamental church that when it started and how it came down all the way through. Of course, I cannot give you all the detail about the history of the church, but I can briefly give you, uh, which is based on the Bible and also the record of the history of the church, and so we will understand where we are, what kind of a church that we are attached to. All the born-again Christians, according to the Bible, when people accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and the Lord, and they, they, they should find a local church, the local church which is uh, believing Jesus Christ, the Word of God, and practicing according to the Bible, uh, which we call it fundamental church. So the person who got saved, and they should be attached to that local church as a member so they can be sharing the ministry of a church. The people who are uh, here already who are attached to this church as a member, even, even though they are working the same hour that you are working, sometimes 10 hours, sometimes 12 hours, sometimes a night shift, so their body is exhausted, so their body is a, you know, with a heavy pressure, but still they're happy to share the ministry of the local church. And this is how uh, at BBC is being continued. Nobody is being paid, but they are, have a cheerful, their willing heart in their heart because they, they believe what Jesus has done for their life, eternal life, and in return, and they are willing to serve God, taking part of a church. And so that is why it is very important for you to know what is a fundamental church doing and how you can become a fundamental member. You don't become a fundamental member, as, we, uh, as you heard last Sunday, you don't become a fundamental member of a church because you are attending a fundamental church. You, you have to follow the basic practice which will train you so you know how to become a fundamental member and then you will do take part of the ministry in that church that you believe oh this is the fundamental church because they believe in the word of God and they're practicing accordingly so I like to be a member of this church because I know regardless of size of a church I'm happy to be in the right one and so in order to become that way then you need to be practicing what they practice in the church if there are 50 people in the church and 49 are practicing according to the Bible and then you become a member but you are the only one who is not following the, exactly what others are doing, you are attending the fundamental church but you are not yet a fundamental Christian because of your practice. Your membership. Maybe you can uh, introduce yourself to the, 
to the people, oh, I go to the FPBC, I go to the Bible believing and practicing church, I am the member because I was baptized there. But God knows your heart because you are not following the basic, very, very basic uh, practices. Then you cannot really say that I am a fundamental church member. So that's what uh, God was telling us how to behave, how to prepare ourselves to be. Even though church sometimes may not be a fully a fundamental church, but if the member is a fundamental member, then their member can change the church into the fundamental church because of what you believe from the Bible and what you want to uh, practice. But even church has a good building and good uh, the history background of 100 years old, 200 years old, but if the member is not fundamentally practicing, and that church will no longer become a fundamental uh, church. So today, as a second part of what we uh, started last Sunday, we like to understand where, how, and when the fundamental church started so many of you will understand the what church that you are uh, you are uh, being a member to that church that uh, where you are serving the Lord. As we re uh, as we read, Jesus Himself said, "I will build my church." He said, He announced it, He prophesied to the Peter that I will build my church because. God said Himself, because God said Himself, we firmly believe that He is the one who started the church. And we also believe the church that He built must be a fundamental church, because it was built by God. And the word, the Bible which we read, it was given to the, to the prophets, the men of God, by the Holy Spirit, so they took down the inspiration and then they recorded it. So if actually the author is God. He used a human being to record, but actually the author of this Bible is God. And he himself made it so. And then he announced and prophesied in the Bible until the even, even though heaven will disappear, the earth will disappear, but my word will not be disappeared. So that means that the word of God, which is the Bible, which was completed in about AD 100 after the, the New Testament. Old Testament was already uh, made, uh, written a long time ago, but the New Testament of, uh, by the apostles, but the uh, other people who have the inspiration from the Holy Spirit, and they recorded it, they recorded it, and then around, right, soon after John the Baptist died, and then uh, the apostle of John died, and then uh, the Bible was completed around the AD 100. So that Bible, which was completed, should not be changed, should not be added, or should not be removed anything as we read from the Bible. And but with what we what we believe is because God prophesied it will remain unchanged, which means the Word of God will be perfect and fundamental to original, and that it will continue. So, but because of there is a, some uh, the danger that some people or Satan will use some people to add something and remove something, and because of that, the God, the Word of God in Revelation 22, it is warning: if anybody remove or add something, all the plagues in the Bible will be upon them. And if somebody remove, then his, his name will be removed from the, uh, the Book of Life. And this is already warned. But the question is, the big question, at this very moment in 2012, do you believe that there is a pure, fundamental, unchanged Word of God in this, world, in this, in this universe now? We believe, yes. Why? Because God 
prophesied. There will be. Even though some people will try to change it, but the purely unchanged word of God will be preserved until the time God has planned. And so we say that even now we have the purely unchanged. The word of God is here in this word. And also, going back to the same question, that is there any fundamental church who are trying to fulfill or practice according to the word of God? Are there some churches there in this word? Then the answer is yes. Why? Because Jesus himself, that he said, the, the gates of hell will not prevail. The church. Church will always win over any attacks coming from the word or from the, uh, from the devil. So we know that there is a purely unchanged word is preserved at this moment. And the church, which is, can be called a fundamental church, is a still around the word. So the pure word and the pure church like what Matthew chapter 5 verse 18 says, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. So this is what the Bible is telling us. And so we know that uh, pure word of God and uh, fundamental church is being preserved in this, in this earth. So, somewhere and we pray that we want to be our local church FPBC will be one of them and that we are the member of this fundamental church so we always be proud that I belong to a fundamental church and that I am one of the member of that church as I said the Bible was completed around 8100 and as you know that first, when God told the people to record his, his, the commandment, that they written with the hands. They did not have a good paper like this, but they have uh, some, uh, sometimes they put it on the, the, the sheepskin or the papyrus or the, the paper that is made from the, uh, some plant. And so they recorded it. That is what we call the original handwritten copy and script. And but it does not last forever. So because of that, what they did, you know, those are faithful people, and they re, they copied no not not using Xerox, but they copied every single characters and dots with the handwriting. The people who were who are uh, responsible, there are maybe thousands of thousands of people who are doing this from the Genesis to all the way down to Revelation, they written whole Bibles by handwritten. So this, but the original, the first handwritten scripture, the script cannot be found, but nowadays all those handwritten copies are, many of them are found. And there, but what we know among those, majority are equally same, but small portion of the found Hand copied, handwritten copies are changing some part of the Bible, which is used by some other or the, the group of religions. And but what is good to understand when the Old Testament was written, given to the human being, the most common language that time was the Hebrew, the Jewish language. So it was written in in the, the in Hebrew. And when the, the New Testament was written, the Greek culture was predominating whole word, and so this Greek word was was used to write the the New Testament. But nowadays, as the time goes on, the Hebrew is not no longer a, a worldwide famous language, and the next Greek is no longer a uh, famous language. But God. Somehow that he managed, English will be the next, the worldwide uh, language. So that's how the God uh, managed during the uh, England 
English king, the King James, and then they brought all the scholars, and according to the, the proper uh, the ways, they have translated this the right script into English, and that we call it. Of course, before the King James Version, there was a, a few more copies translated, but finally in 19, uh, 1611, the King James Version was introduced, and since then, they, they, there was some argument, but they find no errors, nothing, because this is, we believe the promises and the prophecies that Bible said, my word will be preserved until the end. So, we believe that God used English to preserve His word until now. That's why, that's why around the world, so many fundamental churches are using the King James Version Bible, especially it was published in 1611. So sometimes, if one church at outside the signboard, uh, such as the Bible, the Baptist Church or Bible Baptist Church, they said, and then we we use the Bible uh, 1611 or King James Version, and then that keeps they are announcing that we are the fundamental church. But you have to you have to know inside whether they are practicing. If their members are practicing fundamentally, then what they are uh, proclaiming is fundamental. But if a member is not practicing, then that church cannot be a fundamental because of the practice. So now we believe that is why uh, we are uh, we are trying to use uh, our Bible, the King James, and then. Uh, also, uh, in each country, they are trying to translate the Bible from the King James English to the local church. And in Korea, we have uh, Korean uh, King James. In the Philippines, Cebuano has King James version into Cebuano, but Tagalog does not have it yet. We pray that someday the Philippine the fundamental members or churches they can put them together so they can really work hard and to translate uh, Tagalog uh, King James the Diglo that you are using uh, though sometimes you want to have an English version and the Tagalog the English version is a King James no problem but the Tagalog translation is not from the King James so we quite often we find some uh, incorrect translation but we pray that it will come someday. So, we know that Jesus started his church when he was here. And he started from Jerusalem. And then when there was a persecution, they moved to Samaria. They, they moved to Antioch. And they moved to uh, Asia Minor. They went to the Turkey and Greece. And then they moved to Europe. And then they moved to... The persecution started, continued. And then they moved to USA. And then the, even in USA, there was a persecution to those fundamental Christians. And so they still spread out from East to the Middle East and the Middle East to the West. And then later on, they even expanded their missionary to China and then finally to the Philippine and Korea. And that's how you are here. That's how we are here. God is working persecution as a motive for the Christians to go out. Sometimes we, we really want to stay safe and comfortably in one, one place, not going outside, but God has commanded us not only here, but also to other neighbor countries, to the uttermost part of the world, and yet that is His command for the local church to do it, the ministry, local ministry, as well as a mission, overseas mission. But when the church is not doing that, and God bring the persecution, and the, 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 all these people are scattered. And that's what happened in uh, Jerusalem 2,000 years ago. And the church in Jerusalem, except the 12 apostles, all the Christians were scattered to uh, the Samaria, and Antioch, and even Cappadocia, and all other areas, and they started soul winning, and the local church there. And then later, uh, 
the, uh, Jesus has appointed Apostle Paul and he become the really a professional uh, missionary uh, starting from Antioch uh, to all these uh, the Turkey areas and Greece area and even to uh, Europe when he was in the prison. And this is how it started. And so I will give you a brief uh, the historical record uh, where the fundamental church, how the fundamental church came down. 1830, about, not exact, but 1830, John the Baptist came just before the, uh, Jesus Christ came, and he was already uh, uh, the proclaiming the word of God to the Jewish people for them to repent, and those people who repented, they uh, followed the baptism of the repentance. And soon Jesus also came, and then he started his church. And then after that, then we know that the baptism that time was every every baptism was immersion by immersion on the water. Because the John the Baptist did study that way, and God gave them a picture of Jesus Christ uh, dying and burying under the ground and then resurrecting. This is the, the picture of uh, Jesus Christ being crucified and buried and resurrected. And the baptism by immersion on the water is a, exactly the same picture. That all the believers of Jesus Christ, when they they proclaim, that when they say that, uh, that I believe Jesus is my Savior, so I accepted Him, and so He is my Lord, and then He is following, proclaiming, to the public that I follow is a step. So he also followed water, follow water baptism, go on the water, and then arise. This is how the uh, first church is started. And uh, also Jesus followed the same baptism by the John the Baptist, as Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 says. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight way out of the water and lo the heavens were open unto him and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and light the, the lighting upon him and this is how Jesus followed before starting his public ministry so ever since when the purely uh, the fundamental way of the baptism and doctrine was introduced the Satan is also trying to change it slightly and change it, add some, uh, remove something or add something, and it becomes this way. And then until uh, AD 313, when Constantine started the basic, the basis of our Catholic Church that time. And that is the beginning of the history of Catholic in AD uh, 313. And when the Catholic started, according to the history, they also baptized people on the water by immersion, not, not sprinkling. And AD 909, the Catholic Church was divided into two parts. One Roman Catholic, the other one is a Greek Catholic. And then uh, 15, AD 1530, because until then, so started 300 and until uh, 1530, for 1,200 years, the Catholic has been corrupted in doctrine and practice in many ways. I don't, I don't have to tell you again because you already know what happened during that uh, 1,000 years of uh, Catholic history. And the people, the Catholic priests like the, the Luther, or some other people, John Calvin, they protest against the wrongdoing and wrong practice of Roman Catholic. And so there was the Reformation. And uh, AD 1530, Luther started Lutheran Church. In a similar way, AD 1541, Presbyterian separated from the Roman Catholic. They protested. And uh, AD 1551, Anglican Church also separated from the Roman Catholic. And AD 1785, the Methodist also uh, 
separated, protested from the Catholic and they studied. So Luther, Lutheran Church, the founder is a Luther. And Presbyterian is a John Calvin. And Anglican is, I, I do not have the record of that, Anglican Church, but it's separated from the Roman Catholic. And the Methodist, John Wesley. So they, they have, they, all these church who are protested against uh, the wrong practice of a Roman Catholic is called Protestant. But the Baptist church, when Jesus started from the beginning, we, we, we were there before the Catholic started, so we don't have to protest against the Catholic. So we don't belong to Protestant church. But outside, uh, the, outside the fundamental church, all the people know that they believe the Baptist is also one of the Protestant, but actually it's not. We have a longer history from the time of Jesus Christ. So we are the, uh, but one thing that we should agree is when first, when Jesus was here or the apostles were here, we were not called the Baptist church. We were called Christian church. Christian, because we were following the Christ. But later on, these people who were persecuting, because of Romans, Empire, Roman Empire merged with the Christian, some of the Christian leaders, and they started because until the Constantine came to become uh, the, the, the Christian Christendom, he, the, the Roman Empire was persecuting the Christian, the Christ, Christ followers. They are arresting them and burning them and killing them, and all the persecutions were there. So they were hiding. But when Constantine began to have thought, oh, rather than uh, rather than this uh, spreading Christianity to be hiding, I will let them to come outside. So I will make them to be free, because he wants to be the also the the king, or the emperor of the Christians. So he let the uh, he announced. But okay, we will make the Christianity as a national, re the, the state religion, please come. But the fundamental church leader did not come out. But those people who have an ambition in the state the, or power, they came out and they merged together with the Constantine and they formed, they, be, they became the beginning of the Catholic. That's how the Catholic is always the religion and the, the, the government is all, always together that way. And this is how uh, these people started and they began to persecute those hiding fundamental Christian, which is still under so-called underground. They're not coming outside. They're just spreading the word one by one, door knocking, soul winning, and preach the gospel, and then they were sp spreading out. And naturally, those people who have a power, they begin to persecute. So all the way from the beginning of the fundamental church, even even until they move from the uh, the Jerusalem to Greek to Europe and to USA, they were still persecution according to the church history. They were killing of the fundamental people and uh, arresting, putting into the prison. And those people give a nickname to those Christians early day. Those Christians who are baptizing because they already uh, they already have their own name, but these Christians do not have a name. So they call them, hey, those are baptizing group. And this is how we become a Baptist. Before the Baptist, they also give them another names like uh, uh, the first with the Christian, second as a Montanist, a third Pol uh, Polycans, and then next Anabaptist. And all these names were given to these fundamental Christians. But later on, the, the single name, the Baptist, is given to them. And they are the ancestor of our faith to us. And they, so this is how uh, we, we came on until now. But there are more churches 
who can easily understood they are not a fundamental church anymore because they are so much changed. And then why do those churches are being changed? And we have to understand that because they are not faithful to the basics in the church practice, that's why they are being changed. Like I have, we, uh, we have told you, uh, we, we heard uh, last Sunday, there's a uh, very basic areas like uh, worship and also training and soul winning, the mission activities and the fellowship and uh, helping. Those areas is very important, but most importantly, this morning, the most importantly, the worshiping attitude is changed. That's why the fundamental church is being carried away from the fundamental ways. So they look different. Let's review some of the areas. Within the worshiping, in the fundamental church, you should not worship the idol. Why? Because the Bible clearly says, like Leviticus 26 verse 1, do not make any graven images before you and do not worship the idol. That's a direct command from God. And God even said, and God is a jealousy. And so if you worship the idols or any gods before me, then you will be finished. And this is direct command. But people nowadays not only they bring they make the uh, statues of uh, apostles and statues of uh, saints and then many things they are putting in the church or in the outside and they are worshiping and there they make a small mini miniature and they carrying and in their pocket in the purse and i have seen many times in the domestic flights in the philippines when there is some shakings of the airplane, people hurriedly open their zippers and then they carry the, the some statues like this and hold it. Please help me. And I have seen with my own eyes. Do you believe that? There are many thousands of people doing like this. Do you think those are the stone or the wood will save them? No way. But they, this is the, the wrong teaching because of the wrong teaching of the church and wrong doctrine, the people are not worshiping God, but they're worshiping the idols and statues. And nowadays, as the economy grows, instead of God, they're worshiping the money, they're worshiping the material. And some churches, some some because of a one, one uh, pastor become so popular, and they're almost worshiping that pop, the famous pastors, like almost like a God. So instead of worshiping God in the worship on church, they worship idols or money or individual. And this is the wrong attitude. And then the people are slipping away from the God worshiping. Another big change that we can say is the mode of a baptism. Like what Jesus was baptized. He was baptized on the water by immersion. Like a Philippian Enoch also was baptized on the water. The Bible clearly said there was a big water and they and even Jesus went after he was baptized, he went out of the water. If the if the uh, if the sprinkling was a, the method, how can Jesus came out of the water when the sprinkling is a very small water? But the Bible says in many places the one who were baptized when came out of the water means that he was under the water. That is means uh, emergent, emergent. But when the Catholic came in and the record said they're changing the mode of an immersion into the occlusion, uh, uh, which is a pouring, pouring. Uh, you lay, especially the sick person, he cannot be voluntarily be baptized on the water because he cannot move. And they they change they change the uh, practice. So instead of uh, putting him under water, they bring the water in the uh, some uh, the vessels and spread from the foot to the head to foot and like this. And they call it a fusion. And they said, okay, this is the new way of a baptism. The reason why they did is because they changed 
the doctrine of salvation and that they said the what the baptism will wash away your sin so they call it baptism regeneration not only by believing Jesus Christ that if you are baptized by in the church that your sins will be forgiven wash it away this is a wrong doctrine and because of that they must be baptized before they die. So they ask the priest, is it, please bring the water and then pour upon the body of my head so I will be washed away my sins and I will go to heaven. This is a wrong doctrine. And then later for the conveniences. They already changed from the immersion to the fusion. So once they change the practice, it's easier to change the next step. Now, rather than pouring, you all get wet. So why not sprinkle aspersion? This is what they call it aspersion. Sprinkle three times. And they replace immersion into the sprinkling. And they say this is the baptism. Now, when people are becoming more and more accepting this change to doctrine and their, their, their uh, fear of God or their respect of God is being more changed and there will be no more and the church from outside is becoming more and more worldly style Acts chapter 8 verse 38 we can say and he commanded the chariot to stand still and they went down both into the water both Philip and the Pinu and be baptized into the water Okay. If they if they only need to have small water to sprinkle, why do they have to go into the water? This is another written proof in the Bible that how they changed. The another third very important changes in nowadays church, where you can see many un, uh, the narrow way of fundamental is uh, pastora. Many churches are allowing women pastors in the church to preach. Let's open. Let's open the First Timothy chapter three, verse two. First Timothy chapter three, verse two. It says, "A bishop then must be a blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior." given to hospitality, aid to teach. Okay, the most important part is a bishop's qualification is the husband of one wife. Okay, do you consider this wife means a male? Then we are in the trouble. But this wife is a woman. And so, uh, the qualification of a pastor must be the man who has a wife, not who has a wife, but only one single wife, and that he will become, he, he is, has a qualification basically, and there are some more, more qualifications like uh, the vigilance over, a good behavior, and good uh, hospitality like this. But the most important is the, the pastor's qualification is a man, a husband of one wife. But nowadays, they ignore this very clear God-given qualification to be a pastor. They they bring the outside uh, tradition like a woman liberation, a equal uh, e equal human rights, or something like this. And then they allow women. I'm not saying the woman is not as smart as a man. There are some many of women are smarter than the men. It is true, but. If you want to be in the fundamental church, and if you want to be remain as a fundamental member of a church, we have to stick to the Word of God. Amen. Stick to the Word of God. What it means? Whatever the God says in the Bible, we should not change it by our practice. Even Bible says, God said, do not allow a woman he did not say do not allow a woman to be a pastor but the qualification of a pastor is 
described here. A husband of a wife. A man of a wife. So this is this is a correct, but we ignore. Many people ignore and they say, nowadays changed. But how can you say that God is changing? If we ask them, do you believe God will change? They will, they will say no, but what about His Word? Then maybe they cannot answer yes. Because they are already changing the Word by themselves. So when we when we change the worshipping object from God to the idol, to the money, to the human being, then our church is being changed. When we are changing the, the mode of a baptism from immersion and effusion, aspersion, the church is also changing. When we are changing the qualification of a pastor of a local church from the man who has a wife to a woman, Regardless, then that church is being changed and all the people inside that church is being changed also. Not fundamental church and not a fundamental member. The next, what we find in the church, in the worship, is the music. The music that we use to praise the Lord, like what you did today, is we are always acknowledging God we are always thanking God for what He has done for us. And we are praising Him, we are thanking Him, and we are uplifting Him. And all this is the song that we need to do when we are coming to worship Him. But we are changing the word, worldly style. The music is changing into the, the uh, what we call it, the dancing, dancing music, or the heavy, heavy metal music. And... Uh, Something that you can hear on the concert outside, the rock band concert, is now moving into the church. And uh, when unbeliever changing, passing by your church, and he has not, no knowledge about the church music, and that he is always going to the bar or the, the on weekend, and he's enjoying the, the worldly music in the bar, and suddenly on Sunday morning he was a passing by a one nice building, and he hear the same sounds from that building. And he does not know that whether that is a church, but he was wondering, is there any new bar around? Because it is, he listened to the same kinds of a beat, same kinds of a rhythm, same kinds of uh, uh, the loud speaker systems. And how can you tell the difference? Bible says, be not conformed to the word. And also said, do not love the word and the things in the word. And 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, it says, Love not the word, neither the things that are in the word. If any man love the word, the love of the Father is not in him. Okay, if some pastor or the music minister is thinking, Oh, in order to keep the young people in the church, we may have to bring in worldly style music. You know what mistake they are making? Let's say, if you... If you are bringing the worldly style music into the church, thinking that young people will stay in the church because the, the music is the same as outside, then first thing, the church is not changing the word, but church is being changed by the word. That's a big mistake. Second mistake is, when church invested 1 million pesos to have a latest speaker system, 20 inch woofers and everything with the 1 million pesos. After one year, the outside concert will employ 40 inch woofers and more advanced musical system. Then, in order to keep the young people there, then they have to also operate the same system every year like this. If his theory is correct. But you never can beat the speed of the changing outside world in the church. Then, no matter how struggling you are, the young people will follow the bigger speakers and the lousy, the loud, uh, louder uh, systems outside because the people, the young people, whom they believe that they are, will not stand with the old style music. Because your church 
with a 20 inch only, it's already become old. So that's a big mistake. I heard one Korean pastor confessing over the, over the uh, radio uh, interview that he made a mistake of doing that. So he changed, removed all the, 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 the music system and went back to the piano and only, and then he's concentrated on the teaching the Word of God and then he began to have young people stay in the church. Amen. It's not the music. It's only the Word of God. Amen. He, when he become the fundamental way and he said the young people stay, more young people stay, if you find some churches moving from the uh, fundamental way of the music for the worship is changing into the worldly style, then the church is no longer fundamental. And if you like that way, of course you are also not a fundamental member anymore because you are agreeing with that change. The lastly, the message style in the worship is changing also. Gospel of Jesus Christ should be preached and then how we can improve edification of our members will be preached but not rather than that many preachers who studied outside and also inside they are they are using the philosophical uh, touch of the human living or some psychological side philosophy side and so they